Here's a story. You walk into a cafe, a smaller one, and you see a drink name that catches your attention. I'll have a macchiato, you say, and the barista responds, of course, it'll be right up, without asking you for any other information, like perhaps what size you want. It's no matter though your drink is called out, and it's a small little thing. It's a drink that could easily fit in the palm of your hand, and suddenly, you're not quite so sure what you've ordered anymore. It's all right though, you'll figure your way through this. You take a sip of your little drink and find it to be strong. Punchy, what many optimistically call a espresso forward. But with a little bit of added sugar, some stirring, and another few sips, you're all done. You at least now know what a macchiato is and how you like it. It's another day now, one where you don't have time to go to that smaller coffee shop, but perhaps one slightly larger on your way to work. Well, actually, it's quite a bit larger. You see a macchiato on the menu, a drink you're familiar with, and you order it, but are subsequently handed a drink that's far larger than what you faced before. Undeterred, you have a go at it and find it to be, well, different. Immediately, you're faced with a cross-hatching of caramel sauce and about eight times the amount of milk the past beverage had. And now, the question hangs in your mind. What actually is a macchiato? Let's talk about that. This topic is a hill that I would wager that most baristas have died on at one point or another. And whether you still choose to die on this hill or whether you've moved past, I thought we should talk about this drink today. Obviously from the beginning part, you know what drink we're talking about. It is the ever divisive macchiato. We're gonna talk a little bit about the history of the macchiato. We're gonna talk about a couple different forms and we're gonna talk about my opinions on this drink as it stands today. The first thing that I think it's really important to nail down is what does macchiato mean? Now, like a vast majority of your traditional cafe drinks, the word macchiato has its roots in Italy. It has Italian origins as a drink and as a word. Now, a lot of people say macchiato roughly means to mark something, but a little bit more accurate definition is to stain something. So macchiato is stained or marked. This is something important to know. Now, the origins of the drink itself date back to around the 1980s, and it kind of came as a differentiator between people who wanted straight up espressos and espressos with just like a little bit of milk in them. They didn't want a cafe latte. They didn't want a cappuccino. They wanted an espresso that was just cut just a little bit, softened with a little bit of fats and sugars to kind of lighten up the flavor, to kind of increase the mouthfeel, just to, just to mark and stain it a tiny bit. Macchiato was an easy way to kind of differentiate between these two because they were traditionally served in the same size cup. That cup being this one right here. This is a pretty traditional espresso demi toss. It's about three ounces in total. And with a double shot of espresso, usually that lands between one and a half ounces to two ounces of liquid in total. So a little three ounce cup, you would just kind of like top it off with maybe an ounce of milk. They'd be served in the same way. One of them would have milk, one of them wouldn't. So macchiato is a very easy way to define each one. I think we should make a traditional macchiato right now and talk about the build. So to do that, the first thing we need and the thing we need for all of these macchiatos, no matter what definition you are going by, is some really nice espresso. So let's make a double shot. Now the combination of drinks in a more traditional macchiato is pretty simple. You have a double espresso, and you also need some steamed milk. Here's where our first level of variation comes into being because the level of which the milk is steamed is very much up to debate as well. There are kind of two different ways to make a macchiato. As we're gonna talk about today, there are many ways to make a macchiato, but two here in this form that we're talking about right now. I'll be right back with some espresso and some steamed milk. I wanna give a huge thank you to Fellow for sponsoring today's video. This is a very exciting day because there's a new grinder on my brew bar. This is the Opus, an exceptional new grinder from Fellow that is as versatile as it is approachable. It's a conical burr grinder with an absolutely incredible range because for under $200, Fellow has created a grinder capable of everything from espresso to cold brew. It has 41 precision settings, the ability to make micro adjustments, and a 110 gram capacity hopper. Furthermore, the Opus produces coffee that is both clarity and depth and flavor. We're using it today for all the espressos we need, but it also punches well above its weight for filter coffee as well. The sleek and thoughtful design of the Opus is something that shouldn't be looked past either, and the inclusion of a catch cup that fits perfectly against your portafilter is one of my favorite features. This really is a grinder that can do it all, and I'm so pleased to have it on my brew bar. Often I get asked about what sort of grinders I use on a daily basis, and I can tell you that this is definitely going to be one of them. If you'd like to learn more about the fellow Opus or get started with one yourself, then head down to the top link in my description. I have my double espresso here and I have some nice textured milk. The espresso itself is, again, sitting in between one and a half to two ounces in total volume. So 
It's coming up to about right here. We have very little space left on top. The way you will see macchiatos served very frequently is you'll just kind of pour some of the milk in. If you really wanna be fancy with it, I suppose you could do some latte art as well. That's about an ounce of milk, very easy to make. It doesn't change the flavor of the espresso too much. It's still a very, still a very espresso forward beverage. It's pretty lovely. The other way to kind of prepare a traditional espresso macchiato is to instead of pouring the milk in, to scoop off that foam that's resting on top. You have your double espresso and instead of just pouring the milk in, you wanna kind of like scrape off that top, that fluffier layer. In this method of preparation, there is overall a lot less milk than there is in the previous preparation due to the fact that we're using mostly foam. So it's a lot of air and a little bit of milk. Whereas if we're just pouring the milk straight in, you get more like milk liquid uh, than you do foam. You can stir this up. You can add sugar if you want. It's a nice textural experience and it's still a very tasty drink. This is what a lot of people refer to as a traditional macchiato. <laughs> And if you thought this was a little bit complicated defining between those two ways of preparing this drink, it gets so much worse, oh my word. Now, while the traditional macchiato really gained popularity in the 80s, we need to fast forward a little bit to kind of talk about the next stage of the macchiato. We are fast forwarding to 1996, in which Starbucks turned 25 years old. Now, during this 25 years old celebration, they wanted to create kind of a fun celebratory, like one-off drink to to really spice up the menu and, and celebrate 25 years. That's a pretty significant achievement. Now the drink that was created for this is what we now know as the caramel macchiato. It was a beverage that was created using vanilla syrup, steamed milk, espresso, and then a caramel cross hatching over the top of it. So it was a layered drink uh, and it ended up gaining a lot of popularity. And so Starbucks, seeing how popular it was with folks, decided not to take it away as they do with many seasonal things. They decided to keep it and it's now one of their most popular items and a mainstay on their menu. All of this is well and good until you start to look at the two drinks side by side. If you'll remember right here, is our macchiato. It's a macchiato. It's been a macchiato for at least 16 years at this point. It's a pretty easy combination. Let's grab what then became the caramel macchiato. This is the caramel macchiato. And there is a very obvious and very definitive difference between these two. First of all, as I mentioned before, we have syrups in this one. And if you'll remember on the build in this one, no syrups. This is just espresso and milk. Whereas this one is it's very flavored. You have vanilla syrup, you have caramel cross hatching. It's very fancy, it's very pretty, and it tastes very, very different. Now I'll be the first to admit that this drink very, very tasty. It is sugar and coffee and milk, and there is nothing wrong with that combination. And it is in fact, often very delicious. I tell this story pretty frequently, but one of the very, very first coffee drinks I ever had, like before I even touched a sip of black coffee was when I was 16 years old, I went to Starbucks and I ordered a caramel macchiato for the very first time because it was the only drink uh, that looked even vaguely approachable. I recognized caramel, I knew I liked caramel and the word macchiato, seemed fancy, and <laughs> that's what I was going on at that time. So suffice it to say, I have some familiarity with this drink. I feel like I can very safely say that it's very delicious. However, it is very different from what we also know as a macchiato. And herein lies the grand debate that every barista has to kind of take a side on in a way, because there is a lot of confusion between these two drinks. If you go into a specialty coffee cafe or a third wave cafe or whatever you wanna call it, if you order a macchiato, this, more than likely is what you're gonna be served. However, if you go into any Starbucks and order a macchiato, you're probably gonna get something really similar to this. Now, Starbucks and specialty coffee tend to have different customer bases. So you have different folks that are interested in specialty that probably don't go to Starbucks that much. And the folks who are really loyal to Starbucks probably don't venture out into specialty that much. And all of that is well and good. Each party has their own interest in macchiatos and it's separate and it's fine because they don't overlap. However, what you do see a fair amount is crossover. It always happens. Folks who are more loyal to Starbucks will kind of explore out into specialty coffee. They'll go into a shop, see the word macchiato, which they recognize, and they'll order it, expecting this and not this. And now the barista has two choices. What they can do is perhaps infer that the person is ordering a more Starbucks-like macchiato because of the fact that they put like a syrup qualifier in front of the drink, or perhaps because they are specifying a larger size than three ounces. And then they can just go and make that inferred drink for the person. Now, this drink will probably end up being more traditional to a latte rather than a macchiato, but it will please the customer and it will be very tasty. Now, there is another thing that the barista can do to the customer instead of just going on and making the drink that they know the customer ultimately wants. Sometimes, and perhaps you have experienced this or you have done this to a customer, 
and I will shamefully admit that I did this very early on in my barista career, is that they will look at the customer and they will say, what you're ordering is not a macchiato. You want a latte, we don't do that. Macchiatos are little. Did you not know what macchiatos are? Maybe it doesn't get that dramatic. <laughs> that was a little bit harsh, but I'm sure you have heard some variation of this in the past, or at the very least, you've probably seen it online. The macchiato like conundrum is an ongoing debate, and it's really like usually the punchline of a lot of kind of mean-spirited jokes. And then the customer feels embarrassed or ashamed or kind of awkward about the fact that they didn't actually know what they were ordering, even though it's like kind of not true because they were actually ordering a drink that does exist. And it's just, it's bad all around. It's not good for the barista, it's not good for the customer. And at the end of the day, you never even know if the customer gets what they originally wanted. And this is where we have to go back to the name of this drink. It is called a macchiato. Macchiato, remember, means to stain or a little bit more loosely to mark something. And if we want to be really, really pedantic about it, all of these are macchiatos. We are just marking different ingredients in the drink. Let me explain. In this build, the traditional macchiato, that is three ounces, we started with two ounces of espresso, and then we marked it with an ounce of milk. Easy, that is an espresso macchiato. It's marked espresso. We move over to the Starbucks macchiato, however, we have a little bit different order of operations in the build of this. So we start off with our cup, exact same as we did with the traditional macchiato, just a different sized cup. We put our vanilla syrup in, great, a nice flavor. Then we add our milk, a lot of milk, fills up most of the cup. Then we top it off with espresso. We pour the espresso over top. We mark the milk with the espresso. We stain the milk with the espresso. And somehow, the word still kind of fits the drink. Now, we put caramel on top. It's very lovely and delicious. Good stuff. But I think what I'm trying to get at here is that it seems a little bit excessive to really die on this hill of macchiatos can only mean espresso marked with milk wherein that's an espresso macchiato. However, you can have a latte macchiato. Latte means milk in Italian. So you have your milk and you mark it with espresso. Great, it's still a macchiato. I feel like I'm just gonna be repeating that a lot today. I think something that's important to take into context when talking about traditional cafe drinks and coffee drinks is that oftentimes words and definitions and drink builds will evolve over time. You will still have locations and plenty of opportunities to taste these very, very traditional, like way they started out beverages. But oftentimes, as people get interested in specialty coffee, as they get interested in cafes, they will bring their own takes and twists on these sort of traditional beverages to kind of make them their own. And I think there should be allowance for that. Additionally, something I wanna throw out to baristas who have kind of done this whole like explanation of the fact that like the macchiato you're ordering isn't a macchiato, it's a latte. I think something that they should also take into consideration is the fact that if you're going to be that specific about the Italian roots of the drinks that we make, then you need to be that specific with every other drink you make on your menu. For example, we have something like a latte. Latte means milk in Italian. It does not necessarily mean a combination of milk and espresso. You would say cafe latte if you wanted what we in the US at least uh, refer to as a latte. And it just feels a little bit silly to kind of harp on people about one thing when there's, there's all this other stuff that you then by proxy should be harping on them with. Now I am team no harp. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I would prefer not to harp on the customers. And I think something that's really, really important to remember is also the fact that as baristas and in hospitality, it's our job to meet people where they are. Now, we may have all sorts of education about coffee. We may have all sorts of like past experiences with coffee and opinions about drinks, but it's not our job to enforce those opinions on others, especially in the context of a cafe, which is kind of like a true third space. It's a, it's a lovely, comfortable place that's not work. It's not home. It's a, it's a gathering community place that exists kind of in between those two. And it's something that makes a lot of people feel very comfortable. I think, it's really not worth it to put them out and make them feel uncomfortable simply over perhaps a slight, if any, misuse of a singular word. I think it's really valuable to often think about it from a customer's perspective, about a time when you have gone into some place that perhaps you're not super familiar with, an industry or a store that you've never been into before, and you have felt uncomfortable or maybe put off because of the fact that you didn't know everything about it. There's really no such thing as common sense. 
And that definitely applies to coffee as well. We can't assume everyone knows the same things as us. We can't assume everyone has worked in a cafe for three to four years or knows the history of every single drink. It's just not fair to them. And as we talked about before, I think these both can very fairly be called macchiatos. Now, they are certainly very, very different drinks, but I think just being a little bit specific about what sort of macchiato you're looking for will go a long way. If someone walks up to you and orders a caramel macchiato, you probably already know that they aren't looking for this with a tiny bit of caramel added. They're probably looking for something like this. And if you can make that assumption and make that drink and they're happy with it, I think that should be the end of the situation. In fact, there shouldn't even be a situation to begin with. And that is the hill that I am now choosing to die on. A long time ago, and I, I'll pretty freely admit this, I definitely fell into the class of barista that was like, I need to tell everyone what a macchiato is and they're wrong and Starbucks has ruined it all. And I think that's just not true anymore. I think things change, I think things evolve, and I think it's our job in hospitality to kind of be aware of those shifts and be able to help customers and guide them through to get what they want at the end of the day. Really, my only hope at the end of every interaction is that the person walks away with what they wanted to order and that it tastes really good to them. I don't care what they called that drink, I don't care how many modifiers they put on it, we all have interesting and different coffee tastes and that's a really, really cool thing. And to be able to serve those sort of coffee drinks to people and make them feel good with a little tiny part of their day, is a really fun part about being a barista. And that's why I see a lot of equality in these drinks. They're different, they serve different purposes, but they're both tasty and people can like both. And we can probably call both of them a macchiato at this point. This has been my brief, <laughs> <laughs> probably not so brief history about the macchiato, my thoughts about its preparation, and the fun little skit at the front, which I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you want me to do more of those because I really enjoyed making it. This was a whole lot of fun to talk about. I would love to do more deep dives and maybe opinion pieces. I feel like this definitely turned into an opinion piece at the very end. They're fun to make. I've got a lot of them, so let me know what you think. Anyways, this was a slightly different video than usual, but I will see you all next time. If you would like to check out the fellow Opus, which is a very, very exciting launch, uh, feel free to go down to that top link in my description. That's the video. <laughs> I am Morgan Drinks Coffee. You will find me here on YouTube once a week, plus a good amount of YouTube shorts. Additionally, you can find me on TikTok or Instagram almost every single day. I have two very delicious drinks in front of me. I am going to go drink them and I'll see you all next time. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.